Hello everyone. I just find out that the wet market in Wuhan that started all the shit the whole world is dealing with has just reopened. Does that make you want to drink? Me too. My name is Donald Mackay from XA International Trade Advisors and today we're going to spend a little bit of time looking at both the economic and societal consequences of prohibition in South Africa. From 1920 to 1933 America prohibited the manufacture, transportation and sale of alcohol. And on the 27th of March 2020, South Africa enacted our own period of prohibition, completely stopping the sale of alcohol and tobacco. And today we're going to look at just what the implications of this are beyond simply the foregone revenues. Take a look at the two videos that are hopefully on the screen next to me right now. One was shot at the height of apartheid and one was shot just a few weeks ago at the start of prohibition. Both of these are truly disturbing images, but it really, really worries me that living in a democratic South Africa, we still have a police force treating citizens in the way that this policeman appears to be beating the South African citizen. So what are the economic and societal costs of prohibition? Well, humiliation fear for one and roughly 133 million rand per day in uncollected excise duties. Collins Corsa was recently beaten to death in his yard for drinking beer and arguing with the soldiers. And now we are facing an additional 70,000 soldiers on the streets, presumably armed with automatic weapons as the last batch of the 2000 or so soldiers were armed with. Why is it that the soldiers who are patrolling need to carry automatic weapons when neither the police nor the Metro police are patrolling with automatic rifles? We are not at war. In fact, when we were at war in 1988, according to Wikipedia, South Africa only had 71,000 active troops. So this truly is quite an alarming statistic. The words we are using to describe citizens who are caught with tobacco products or alcohol on them is also disturbing. Here's an extract from media coverage of an arrest that was made on the 14th of April of a man in Centurion. They found one male roaming the streets who could not account for being there. He was searched and the TMPD officers found four packets of cigarettes on him. Upon further questioning, he led them to a flat where he bought the cigarettes. Nine people were found at the premises. All right, let's just stop there for a moment. That is a staggering amount to have in one flat. Absolutely no social dis distancing going on. The place was searched and the officers discovered many boxes of cigarettes. The cigarettes found had an estimated street value of more than one and a half million rand. We never describe legitimate trading product as having a street value. Um, so definitely almost certainly in fact excise duties were not paid on these cigarettes. Cash amounting to 325,000 Rand was also seized. All 10 people including the person who was found with the four packets of cigarettes were arrested for contravening the local lockdown rules. One male was also charged with bribery after offering 3,000 Rand to the officers. Now I would never suggest you bribe an officer but I do feel you've been particularly tight-fisted if you sit in with 325,000 Rand and you only offer 3,000 Rand as a bribe, give him half of it. You're going to lose all of it anyways. So I just, yep, I, I feel they should be locked up for stupidity more than anything else. What is the fiscal cost of prohibition? Well, directly, like I said, we lose around 133 million Rand a day in excise duties. Now, a lot of this will simply never come back whole new illegitimate supply chains are being set up and these are not simply going to be dismantled when lockdown ends. The demand for alcohol and cigarettes has not disappeared, simply the supply. The prices go up. I'm told reliably by people who I know who smoke that they're paying up to 120 Rand for a packet of cigarettes. And again, the people they are buying from may very well never have paid excise duties on those cigarettes in the first place. The wine industry is losing around 200 million Rand a week in export sales that it is not making. And those markets that it would have sold that alcohol to 
are, are not um, sitting with a prohibition on the sale of alcohol. So that shelf space is been replaced by wine from other countries. Already countries like the UK have signed very favorable trade agreements with countries like Australia around wine, whereas South Africa has not achieved that kind of agreement with places like the UK or with Europe, which means that we run a very real risk of not only losing the 200 million a week in lost sales, but never actually getting a substantial part of that back again. And this would be absolutely devastating to the wine industry. Most of this devastation will be felt in the Western Cape, where most of the wine industry is situated. You've got this weird situation going on in the Northern Cape, where you've got some people next to the Orange River producing wine and grapes, but uh, certainly most of the impact is going to be felt in the Western Cape. The wine industry also employs around 300,000 people. So the societal impact is going to be truly devastating on a very, very vulnerable part of South African society. I'm not suggesting that we reopen bars, shabines, taverns. Of course, this is problematic. We don't want people congregating. But I do have a problem with the paternalistic view of government who feel they have to punish South Africans, stated explicitly by some ANC politicians who've supported people being told to do squats, to do push-ups, to roll around on the ground because they were not socially distancing properly. I am concerned that this social cost, as always, is going to be predominantly borne by the poor. We do not see people in Bryanston being told to roll around on the streets. We do not have the army or police breaking into people's houses, confiscating their single malt or pouring their expensive gins over their head. No, of course, it's people like Mr. Corza who bear the brunt of the overreach by the police and the army at the moment. To understand what the implications of losing the sale of alcohol into the market is, our next video will show you how pineapple beer is brewed at home, what the ingredients required are, will show you a successful brew of pineapple beer, how to measure the alcohol content of your home brew, how, much, how the excise duty would normally be calculated on beer like this, and therefore how much money is foregone by government while people figure out how to brew their own booze at home. Coming back to the earlier comments on the death of Mr. Corsa, I am concerned about how we get to the point where we have soldiers on the street with automatic weapons. We will be talking to a security expert to better understand what the rules are that determine how soldiers are armed. Does the army provide soldiers and police with shambox? What is allowed and what is not allowed at times of lockdown? Thank you for tuning into this. We'll be reverting back to some technical videos over the next few days again. Please be sure to subscribe to the channel, ring the bell to stay updated, and of course, be safe. Bye-bye.